For this video series, I'm revisiting every episode of the 1993 animated series Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. This show was produced by Deke and was a surreal slapstick take on Sega's mascot and his world, which seemingly drew as much influence from the likes of Looney Tunes and Ren and Stimpy as it did the video games themselves. As a kid, I didn't really like this ridiculous version of the Hedgehog with Attitude. But maybe now, all these years later, I'll find something in it that I didn't back then. So join me as I revisit every episode with an abridged retelling of the story, followed by a review and a ranking, as I put together my definitive list of the best to worst episodes of The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Let's see how silly things get today as we dive into Episode 3. Love Sick Sonic. Our story begins with a strange looking green woman in a state of distress. She's being pursued, as characters so often are in this series, by Robotnik's henchmen Scratch and Grounder. And it seems they feel the best tool to use to catch her is a fishing rod. And a quick note here right out of the gate. Is it just me or is the animation worse in this episode than the previous two? Or at the very least, the art direction's changed to be more exaggerated and sillier. Anyway, with the woman captured, we then cut to the camp of our heroes, Sonic and Tails. They hear the woman's cries of distress when... <laughs> Wait, sorry, I've got to stop again. Right, back to the animation. Look at how big Sonic's f***ing head is here! <laughs> Yikes! Anyway, Sonic and Tails race off to help the woman, who we learn is supposed to be a hedgehog. We have ways of making you talk, Hedgehog! So Scratch and Grounder are interrogating her, because presumably, as a Hedgehog, she is likely to know where Sonic is, as he is also a Hedgehog. She doesn't know, but he shows up anyway to save her, so it worked, I guess. Following some brief silliness involving Sonic in a photographer disguise and some glue, our blue boy saves the woman and takes her back to his camp, where she starts coming on to him hard. I heard you were speedy. I heard you were brave. I didn't know you'd be so handsome. Like, seriously, it's on a plate for Sonic. No doubt about it, she's looking to f If you've seen this show before, you'll know that this version of Sonic is a thirsty boy. He regularly hits on females, so sure enough, he falls for her advances immediately. Tails, on the other hand, is apprehensive and wants nothing to do with this woman. I hate dining outdoors. Oh, the sun can be ruinous to a girl's complexion. Bloody hell, she sounds like a pain in the ass already. I'm with Tails on this one. But Sonic is smitten. Perfect. Great, Sonic should have quit while we were ahead. All it needs is flowers. Flowers? <laughs> flowers! Look at this simp. He's known her for two seconds and she's already got him running off for anything she desires on a whim. And those flowers aren't good enough apparently, so she just throws them away. Too bad they're not Moby C and Marvelous Marigoldias. What an arsehole. Blech. We're back to some more wacky animation here. So, this difficult woman sends Sonic off on a series of silly tasks, beginning with a trip to the equator 2,000 miles away to find some very specific type of flower that she wants for some reason, leaving Tails behind to entertain her. She's named Breezy, I think, by the way. As mentioned, Sonic races off to the equator and stops by a map salesman, who is bizarrely reluctant to give him a map. But when he eventually does, he never takes any money for it. Instead, he warns Sonic to watch out for the angry alligators and to beware of a python and some cannibals. Something smells fishy here. So Sonic encounters these creatures and makes short work of the alligators and the python, but does end up getting captured by the cannibals. Are these cannibals? Like, they're pigs or warthogs or something. Some sort of hog. I'm not an expert. But surely eating a hedge hog would not be considered cannibal behavior to them? Eh, maybe I'm wrong. Or maybe they just also eat anything, including other hogs. I don't have enough information to go on, but this is not your typical group of cannibals. Moving on, after a bit more nonsense, Sonic escapes from his situation and the cannibals explode for some reason. After all this fannying about, Sonic finally reaches the garden where the flowers Breezy wants for some reason are being grown. Unfortunately, he is informed by a rabbit tending to the garden that nobody ever returns from this weird place because 
<laughs> wait for it. A fire-breathing dragon won't let them return. And then the dragon appears and promptly attacks Sonic. Like, what in the actual f*** was going on in the writer's room for this one? Sonic quickly defeats the dragon by setting its foot on fire, which in turn gets it attacked by an alligator. And he's then able to return to Breezy and Tails with these <laughs> supposedly amazing flowers. Yet the moment he gets back to camp, she immediately gets shitty with him and starts moaning that he took too long to get them. She's also hungry, but won't eat Sonic and Tails' chili dogs. She'll only eat some fancy ones that Sonic has to go and collect from a place 6,000 miles away. And ignoring the mounting piles of red flags, Sonic once again races off, this time to get the fancy food. On the other side of the planet, and close to death, Sonic asks a polar bear for directions to the chili dog place, which he kindly provides. But after he leaves, the polar bear reveals that he is in cahoots with Dr. Robotnik. Dr. Robotnik, who has three toes on each foot in this universe, it seems. Ugh. Look at the animation here. What is going on in this episode? We soon learn from a phone call between Robotnik and the bear that Breezy is a secret agent for Dr. Robotnik, and she has him running all around the planet Mobius in order to knacker him out. This scene also marks the first time we see Robotnik's nipples in the series. The first of many times, I assume. Some other visual notes here. Ugh. Look at Grounder's gross old human hand. Why would Robotnik install that? Oh, here we see Robotnik has grown an extra toe on each foot since about 20 seconds earlier. He now has four on each foot, getting close to that magical number five. Or ten in total. There's so many bonkers expressions and huge exaggerated faces in this episode. It's so strange, but at times it's kind of funny and sort of works. I mean, look here. Robotnik's huge! Next, we learn of Robotnik's plan, which is to send Sonic to a remote, dangerous part of the planet, while Robotnik, using his new Egomatic Tunnelizer and Town Terrorizer, floods a nearby town which he considers an eyesore on the view from his fortress. He wants to drown all the... uh... whatever these creatures are supposed to be, and turn the whole area into Lake Robotnik. A plan which seems... a bit dark. And even Scratch and Grounder seem uneasy about the whole thing. But they are sent off to help deal with Sonic, while Robotnik goes out to drown the town alone. Sorry, going back to these things for a second. I've never understood why they do this in this series. Why wouldn't the population of Mobius just be different animals like in the games? Or maybe the odd human here and there? Nature already did the designs for you! There's no need to draw this weird stuff. Also, I'm struggling to find game references in this episode, by the way. So let's be very generous and say this drilling machine could be inspired by the boss from Mystic Cave Zone. It's a stretch, and I think it's more likely this is just a generic drill machine, but let's give them this one. So Robotnik sets off to destroy the town. Nice of the animators to include labels here for clarity, by the way. And he's very confident of his victory while Sonic is distracted. Back at camp, Breezy is bitching and moaning to Tails that Sonic is taking too long, when our blue boy, who temporarily turned into a snowman because... why ever not, finally returns with the chili dog. But Breezy's not happy because it's too cold, so she then sends Sonic off yet again to buy a stove to heat the hot dog. With Sonic away, Tails finally calls Breezy out on her BS, only for her to attack him and throw him in a river. Scratch and Grounder then arrive at the camp to assist Breezy in setting what she calls a final trap for Sonic. Unsurprisingly, she starts being a massive arsehole to Scratch and Grounder too. She makes it clear that she's the one in charge of this mission. Elsewhere, Tails saves himself by flying after falling off a waterfall, and heads back to find out what Breezy's deal is. Back at the camp, the three villains are running through a ridiculous trap involving a treadmill and a magnet that will catch Sonic when he builds up enough static electricity or something? I'm not sure. I'm no expert, but the science doesn't sound very solid on this one. And there's also a backup trap too, just in case this weird first one fails. Grounder attempts to report to Robotnik via telephone that the trap is set when he discovers his phone line is down. 
So, in a dramatic twist, Breezy rips her chest open and uses her phone instead, revealing she is in fact a robot. Built by Robotnik, obviously. Tails sees all of this and races off to warn Sonic, but Sonic has put blindness, and his warning falls on deaf ears. Sonic is too smitten to hear him out. Sonic returns to Breezy, where in addition to giving her the chili dog, he also gives her a gift and a poem he's written for her. He's going above and beyond. Shortly afterwards, the ridiculous trap set by the villains is triggered, and it works, and a statically electrified Sonic is somehow drawn to a magnet and captured by Scratch and Grounder. I still don't think the science holds up, but what the hell. Off to the side, Breezy reads what has to be one of the shittest poems ever written, but it's still enough to win her heart. She realizes the error of her ways and rescues Sonic from the trap. Seeing an opportunity, Scratch then drops the backup trap on both of them, but being the fast fella that he is, Sonic is able to rescue Breezy and they both escape, while Scratch and Grounder plummet into an opening in the ground, created by the heavy weight. Silly buggers. With about 45 seconds of the episode left to wrap everything up, Breezy hastily confesses to Sonic that she is a robot and reveals Robotnik's plan to flood the village with a reservoir. Sonic races off and quickly stops Robotnik by hooking a bungee cord to his drilling machine. Job done. Sometime later, we catch up with Sonic, who's moping around, when Tails arrives and hands him a poem written by Breezy, implying that they could be together someday, despite her being a robot. This perks Sonic right up, and the two pals race off. So there we go. Episode 3. It had very little to do with the Sonic video games, the Breezy character was annoying for most of the episode, and we started to see some weirdness creeping in with… whatever these are. The animation was a bit dodgy, and I'm not convinced we needed to see Robotnik's nipples, or occasionally three-toed feet either, truth be told. The pacing of the plot was a bit of a mess, with it wrapping up extremely quickly at the end, and the main trap didn't really make any sense. Some positives, though. We saw a pretty evil take on Robotnik in this one, who was not only happy to drown an entire town, but even wanted to be the one to do it. And with Sonic in full-on simp mode for 95% of the episode, it gave Tails a bit more time to shine. So on to the ranking. I'm ranking these episodes based on how entertaining I found the episode as a whole, and how close it feels to the Sonic games of the era, as I don't like it when the show goes completely ridiculous with incredibly daft plots, and I don't like the gross-out stuff that occasionally crops up either. It's just a personal opinion, but I don't feel it fits with what Sonic is about. So with this in mind, I am going to place Episode 3, Love Sick Sonic, below the previous two episodes. We're still in the early days for this show at this point, but Love Sick Sonic is the worst episode of the series so far for me. Of course, this is likely to change as I make my way through more and more episodes of this show, so why not hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet, and join me on this stupid journey. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button as it helps me out a lot, and let me know your thoughts on this video and Episode 3, Love Sick Sonic. As always, subscribe for frequent evergreen Sonic and Sega videos, and check out some of my other content. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.